Good morning, everybody. Good, 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 good morning. How you doing? Oh, I was getting out of the bathtub yesterday. Well, you know, I have a bat, one of those bathtub showers. I'm getting out of the bathtub yesterday, and I don't know, took a fall, slipped. Whoops! My feet went out from under me, and I ended up on my butt right there on the middle of the bathroom floor, stark naked. Uh, <laughs> um, the only thing I did was I jammed my, well, my butt's a little sore today, but my my little toe on my right foot has kind of gone purple. It's It doesn't hurt. doesn't hurt. It doesn't seem to be broken. It's smooth and fine. It just turned purple, so I don't know. I'm getting old! <laughs> help! Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. I, I probably probably gonna need one of those little uh, little emergency devices one of these days anyway. How you doing, everybody? It's Dave TV for the 9th of September, 2013. Um, just checking out Ray Lewis yesterday. You know, I watched Ray Lewis on the ESPN um, countdown show for the football thingy or whatever it was. You know, yesterday I thought he did a fine job. He looks good. He's he has he. I definitely think you know he's a former Raven who is now working for ESPN. I, hey, you know, I'm not into all that stat stuff, so I'm not listening to every word he's saying and whether it's, you know, connecting with reality, but he looks good. Um, he talks nice. Uh, hey, I thought he looked fine. You know, um, he, he does have a, um, you know, some people have it and some people don't. They, you know, they, they either look good on the media, they just have a, they carry themselves well, especially when you're on television. You know, you just, and he does. He looks and sounds great. He looks like a professional to me. You know, he's kind of a little laid back there. I thought, I, I liked it. I thought he, I was very, very impressed with him on his first day there at uh, ESPN. So there. Some other big news today, TV-wise. Um, Arsenio Hall is returning to the TV dial. Um after many years. Remember, he used to be on, uh, what was it, Paramount syndicated his show back there in the early 90s, and he had his big claim to fame when he had Bill Clinton on uh, back in 92 when he was first announced for president, and Hillary and all that. And then David Letterman, remember the whole David Letterman shift where David Letterman was on the late night, late, late nights on NBC, and the whole Johnny Carson leaving thing, and Jay Leno gets that slot, and then Dave went over to CBS. And Dave's moving over to CBS about 93 or so, 90, when it was that, early 90s. You know, basically a lot of the stations that were carrying Arsenio were CBS stations because they didn't have late night programming. And so Arsenio lost a lot of affiliates all of a sudden there with Dave's move to CBS. And basically that was the end of his show. And, you know, he's been off the air now for, you know, a long time. What's 1993 or 4? I don't know what he actually when he ended his show. It was somewhere in the early 90s or the mid-90s. And then he's been off the air basically till now. And uh, so he's starting up a new show that's going to be carried on the Tribune stations, including Channel 50 here in Washington at 11 o'clock. So check Arsenio's new show out tonight on Channel 50 uh, at 11 o'clock. That's the big TV news for today. Interesting, uh, uh, toward the end of last week, I've been emailing with a bunch of biggies over there at CBS's All News or WNEW. You know, and there's a lot of speculation over the years about what's going to happen with that station. The ratings haven't been that great. You know, we do the ratings every week in WTOP, the established All News or Hubbard owned. It's always, you know, always top one, two, or three in just about every demo you look at. And you look at WNEW, and it's been a year and a half now, and they're still 25th place, 26th place, whatever. And you know, and we've, we've bitched about it and moaned about it all the time, what they need to do to get those numbers up. And, you know, and I think basically the big problem is signal. You know, even though 99.1 does technically reach into Virginia and all that, you can get it. It's not a killer strong signal. You know, and in, in this day and age of PPMs, which are those automatic little meters that, you know, you carry around a little cell phone device and it just senses what you're listening to, um, you need a strong signal in an area to get good ratings. And I think that's the biggest problem that WNEW has is that signal. You know, they could do some more in promotions. You know, I think they have some great people working there. They need to sell those people on the air or maybe buy some TV spots and get people, you know, like Chaz Henry and, and Lisa Baden and Julie Wright and the other folks working over there. Evan, Evan Haining, Evan, yeah, I think that's his name. Anyhow, they need to sell those people and say, you know, you got to be friends with these guys, you know, they're, they're cool, you know, 
and uh, they need to do more of that. Need to, I, I still think they need to upgrade the website. So anyhow, I'm talking to some folks over there at uh, WNEW, and um, interesting stuff. What I'm getting is there's no plans at all in the near or distant future to stop WNEW. They, CBS is pleased with its progress. They like what WNEW's do, is doing. Um, they realized it was going to be a real slow build, but that's that. Um, we are very aware. We came into this market with modest expectations. I am hearing from a top WNEWer. And everyone says how we must burn, be burning through the money. CBS knows how to do news very efficiently. This is what I'm told. Of course, CBS has all newsers in NYC and New York and all over the country. We came into the general neighborhood as WJFK does on payroll, and we have a better ROI. So talking about sister WJFK, sports talker, you know, claiming they have the same, roughly the same payroll as WJFK, and I guess return on investment, too, because they're not paying for sports rights and stuff like that, which, you know, the CBS has the nationals on WJFK, and that costs a lot of money. Uh, because we can run through much more inventory, more entitlements, and we don't have to pay for play-by-play -play rights, the bean counters at corporate ran every conceivable scenario from worst case to very rosy, and we are right smack in the middle, according to this CBS News guy over there in Lanham. 2000 and year, 2013 isn't a great year thus so far, but fourth quarter looks great, and 2012 was better than expected, and uh, there's, they, they really see 2014 as being the year. They, they're really looking at it, I think, as the year that WNEW will finally start get showing something. You know, and that's also the year that Jim Farley will not be officially full-time with WTOP. Jim, you know, is the, the TV, the, the radio news guru that literally, you know, pro, most people would say built WTOP into the brilliantly successful station it is today. Jim's retiring at the end of the year. Now, he's going to still be a consultant over there, but he's not going to be there anymore. And I think CBS is seeing that as a real launching pad now. They've got two years under their belt for WNEW. This is a prestige thing. Plus, the other thing is, from what I hear from people in the biz, is that CBS is selling its all-newsers as a group. It's like what they do with their sports talk stations. Okay, you know, the sports talker in Charlotte or the sports talker in Philly may, may not be doing so well, and the sports talker in Baltimore does pretty good. It doesn't really matter so much specific ratings for specific markets. It's that they have this group of 15 or 20 sports talkers on FM around the country, and they can sell that as a package. And I think they're seeing WNEW the same way with their all-news stations. You know, they have the all-newser in Chicago and two all-newsers in New York and an all-newser and a news talker in Philly and a news talker in Baltimore and a newser in San Francisco, whatever, and they sell it as a package. And having WNEW, having a Washington station in that package, basically the news capital of the country means a lot to CBS. So the specific ratings on WNEW don't really matter that much. Yeah, they'd love to see them up, and they probably will go up, but it doesn't really matter in the long or the short run right now. That's what I'm hearing. You know, W, uh, you know, they're just, it's the drip, drip, drip thing. I really think it. You know, they're just, you know, They've just started a kind of a new news wheel. They've got airborne traffic over there at WNEW. They're now adding federal, military, and government contracting news at eight past the hour. You know, uh, that's again, if they can tap into that government contracting money, those defense contractors and that money. They can make a ton of money, as W, uh, as Hubbard has shown with WFED. WFED is that government news talker, federal news radio, and it doesn't get any ratings. It really doesn't. It's 40th in the ratings, way below WNEW, but it makes money. Why? Because that crazy Capitol Hill market there. You know, they, 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 these big defense contractors and these issue advocacy-oriented political groups will spend tons of money just to reach these movers and shakers on Capitol Hill. And that's one of the reasons why WTOP is the top billing station in the country because they've tapped into this gold mine, and CBS sees itself just a, an inch or two from that. They're close, but not quite there, but they see that, and I think that's what they're looking at. A effing gold mine is what I'm told from some of the folks over there at Lanham. Um, so anyhow, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. You know, if, if WTOP thinks this battle's over, if they think they've, you know, and they've done a really good job. WTOP, you can't you cannot criticize them. They've done a great job the last two years. They've been hit with head-on head -on collision competition, and they've managed to hold their ratings up there. And not only from WNEW, but from a more important competitor to WTOP, that's WAMU, and they've hung right in there. 
Um, they've got these two devils on. They're chasing their every movement. That WAMU public radio news talker, which is getting great ratings and is up there, often one and two with TOP, and then NEW over here. But NEW's, you know, it's just. TOP has done great the last two years. Now the question is going to be, with Farley gone, at least from his full-time gig next year, how are things going to change? And is WNEW finally going to start that vault? You know, I think WNEW will if they can manage to get a decent signal into Northern Virginia. You know, the easiest way to do that, as I've said before, would be to buy Dan Snyder's group and put 94.3 as a WNEW simulcast there. That's in the Warrington, Manassas area, and that would give them a you know, good fill-in area there for Northern Virginia. I think that would be the easiest way to do it. You could buy 99.9 at Frederick, but it's popular country WFRE. You could try buying 92.5 out of Winchester. That's, again, a popular station out there. You know, the easiest way would be to buy Dan Snyder's group, and then he's got a couple of signals. They're not great signals, but they certainly could fill in some of the gaps for CBS in Lanham there, including WNEW. But again, I've said that before, and I'm not going to say it again. But anyhow, you know, WTOP, WNEW, for example, WTOP, you know, WNEW is saying, you know, when you break down the counties, in the, in especially those five metro counties of Maryland, that they their signal is really good, and they do very well in terms of persons, women, like 35, 25, 34, and stuff like that. Um, you know, so, you know, I really think if you're asking me, Right now, is WTOP going to be here next year at this time, and even the next year at this time? I'm saying a very, very, very good possibility, probability. Um, I just that's the way I read it, um, and you know I think it's a prestige thing for CBS. And seriously, somewhere down the line, I still think that CBS wants to buy WTOP. They would just love to get TOP. They could they could move into TOP. Then they would take 991 and maybe put it as a news talker or something like that, and you know really solidify that market. I think that's still their long run, their long range goal. It'll happen someday. It may not happen for a while, and that's perfectly fine with them as long as they have that Washington component to selling those national news and all newsers, news talkers and all newsers, that's fine for them for the moment. So that's the big news. The other big news today, uh, big breaking news, is Joe, Al not Joe, Fred Albritton. What's his, Frank Albritton. What's the guy's name, the, the crazy son over there? Albritton. <laughs> uh, Robert. I don't want to say. Robert Albritton is buying a Capital New York, which is kind of like a gossipy, newsy site for New York City. It's kind of like, I guess you could say, a politico for New York. So it looks like that's, you can see where his politic, where his goals are going right now, is to do a kind of a uh, New York version of politico, which makes sense, I guess. You know, you don't have the rabid, crazy Capitol Hill news media market like you have here. And it's a huge market up there. You know, it's a market that's... It's much bigger than Washington. We'll see where that goes. But, of course, Joe just, uh, Robert, Robbie, just sold off his dad's TV empire and is going to get a billion bucks for it. I presume the FCC will approve Sinclair's purchase of all that, but you never know. It could be delayed a while. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bunch of objections and the FCC delays that longer than, you know, from, you know, they, they're thinking that that'll close in uh, late uh, 2013. I would be surprised if it takes till early 2014 or mid-2014 before that closes, but we'll see. I mean, it will, it will be approved. The FCC is just corrupt and everything, and they'll, 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 they'll approve it, but they want to make like, look like they're, oh, we're diligently looking into it, but, you know, what the heck. So, you know, whatever. All right, folks. Thanks for watching Dave TV for the 9th of September 2013. Don't forget, help support the site. We really mean it. It's our 16th anniversary this month, and we're doing a special 16 bucks, a cheapo 16 bucks for a year at DCR TV Plus, 32 for two years, 160 for 10 years. Sign up. It's a lot of cool stuff over there. Lots more cool stuff coming. Lots of cool stuff, so help us out. Thanks for watching Dave TV for the September the 9th. Bazinga!